All right, here's a story about a nurse. Before some of you come with these lame comments about it doesn't matter the profession, only the person, well, apparently it does matter. Some of these private investigative firms are disclosing that these nurses, male and female, cheat quite a bit. One such investigator said in his 15,000 cases, people in the medical field were at the top. So interpret that however you want. My wife, who is a nurse, has a girl's night out. She cheated. <laughs> so last night, my wife had a girl's night out with her nurse friends. And let me tell you, she claims it was a blast. She said she drank, she danced, she flirted, and even cheated on me to top it off. Yeah, I know. She's going to regret that. She claims I am always working and I never have time for her. Well, she is the one working 12-hour shifts. She claims she woke up this morning feeling awful about what she did. I am not buying it. She is just trying to cover her tracks. I know my wife and she is not a good liar. We got married at the age of 30. We have been married for 17 years, both with great jobs. Me, self-employed though. I own two laundromats, a dry cleaning business and an alterations place. I also have some other businesses on the side. Needless to say, I am busy but I always make time for my wife. Most of the time, I delegate everything to my employees so I can focus on her. But lately, it seems like she is working more hours than I am. With the money my business was making, I helped her through nursing school, even helped her pay her student loans, even before I married her. <laughs> I know, bonehead move. I was in love. Well, sometimes love can cloud your judgment. I would have done anything for her. We bought our house two years ago and everything was perfect. We had planned on starting a family soon after we were married, but it never happened. We decided to just focus on our careers and enjoy each other's company. I am not saying that I do not want children. I love kids, but my wife always said she wanted to focus on her career and have children later in life. So we never really talked about it much, but at 47, I think having children at my age is probably not in my future. At about year 10, our affection and lovey-dovey text messages started to dwindle. Not on my part, her part. When she was working her shifts at the hospital, she would always send me short messages and tell me she was busy. And she would get back to me later. She would return some of the messages, but as time went on, that all ceased as well. I never questioned it because I knew how busy she was at work, but I always wondered why she couldn't find time to at least send me a quick I love you text during the day or even return my messages. A year ago, we really hit a rough patch in our marriage. It had been simmering for a while and I guess it all came to a head. We were both working long hours, her more so than me, and we barely saw each other. We would have dinner together maybe two or three times a week and we wouldn't really talk much. As time went on, she started getting distant. And as you guys call it, the dead bedroom started. We literally stopped being intimate. All of my efforts just went down the drain. So after a while, I just stopped trying. I was putting in all the effort. I didn't know why she was really being distant. I wanted to find out, but I was not going to go through her things or violate her privacy. I asked her one day after she got off work if everything was okay with her and her response was she was just busy with work and a little stressed and that was all she said then one day when she was at work she sent me a text and said she was going out with her friends from work just some fellow nurses i didn't respond to her text i don't know why i just didn't well that night after her shift ended she didn't come home after work i assumed she was going to come home clean up and change, but she didn't. At about 3.30 a.m., she comes strolling in drunk off her ass, smiling, staggering, and I went off on her. My first thought was, how in the hell did she get home? So I peeked outside. The car was in the driveway and she drove home drunk. When I yelled at her, she smiled and said, don't worry about it, and went to sleep in her scrubs. Fast forward a few days, my wife comes home from her shift and we chat a bit. I noticed as we were talking, she is texting and smiling at the same time, looking down at her phone. I didn't say anything. 
She walks over to me and shows me a picture of her and her coworkers at the bar. They look like they're all plastered that night at the club. I looked at her and told her she was very lucky. She apologized and said she wouldn't do it again. That night was the first time we talked, had dinner, laughed, watched a movie, and the dead bedroom went away for a night. Sometimes women who are up to no good may use sex to throw you off. But it was back after a week, and this time she claimed it was the same old shit, work and stress. The funny thing is, I have a few businesses, and I always think about what I can do for my wife. I cook, even clean the house, you name it. To be brutally honest, I don't get the same from her. So as time went on, she started going out with her friends from work a lot, even participating in what she calls girls night. My first thought was she is still doing girls night at her age. <laughs> I started to get a little suspicious, but I didn't have proof of her doing anything but coming home, going to work and hanging out with her friends more than me. Then one day, I just had a hunch to maybe call a private investigator just to get some prices and see what they actually do, what kind of information they could gather for me. When I told the private investigator about my suspicions, he advised me to do a little digging before I hired him. That was some solid advice from the private investigator in my opinion, which made sense. He told me if I had some suspicions, see what I could find out on my own first. I told him I didn't want to violate her privacy. And he said, unfortunately, to find out what you need to, you might have to do just that. So I took his advice and started snooping around her things when she wasn't home. She didn't have any electronics for me to get into. We had a computer at home, but she rarely used it. As the days go by, I couldn't find anything. And to my surprise, my wife's cell phone didn't have a password. I checked it one night while she was asleep, nothing. No suspicious text messages, just text messages back and forth with her girlfriends. I was getting frustrated. I had to find something. So I decided to go old school and check the physical address book on her cell phone, nothing. After my efforts didn't turn up anything, I called a private investigator and told him I didn't find anything and I wanted to hire him. He went over his price. I told him I wanted him to start right away. I told the private investigator what kind of car she drove, what places she frequented, and what her current shift is at the hospital. I gave him a photo of her and some of her friends. I told him to follow her and get evidence of her doing whatever it is she is doing. I wanted pictures, videos, anything he could get. A few days go by and I get a call from the private investigator. He said he has some information for me, but he wanted to meet me in person to go over it. We met at a restaurant slash bar. He told me he followed my wife to a bar and she went there with some of her friends after work. I told him she's been doing this girls night a lot lately, so I wasn't really surprised. He told me they stayed there for a few hours and then my wife and one of her friends left in an Uber after their so-called girls night. He had one of his fellow PIs follow them to a house about 20 minutes from the bar. He said they went into the house and he couldn't get a clear view of what was going on inside, but he did manage to get some photos of my wife and her friend going into the house. I asked him if he could find out who lived there and he said he would try. I told him I wanted to know as soon as possible. A few days go by and I get a call from the private investigator. He has the name and address of who lives at the house and I asked him to send it to me. I put the address into Google Maps and it came up as a business. So I am thinking, my wife goes out with her friends again. This time she leaves the bar with a friend in an Uber and goes to a house that's listed as a business. So a couple of days go by. The private investigator sends me a shocking video clip. Apparently, my wife walked out of the hospital during a break around 10 a.m. and walked up to a man and kissed him. He said they were making out heavily in the parking lot with this man's hands all over my wife touching her breast and grabbing her butt. <laughs> I was in shock. I couldn't believe it. A few more days go by and the private investigator sends me another video clip. This time, my wife is in his car with the same man from the hospital parking lot, kissing him again. But this time they are getting busy, if you know what I mean. I couldn't believe it. I asked him to find out everything he could about this man and he said he would see what he could do. Fast forward a few days 
and I get a call from the private investigator. He tells me everything he knows about the man my wife is sleeping with. This guy is married and has four kids. He is a doctor at a neighboring hospital. I asked the private investigator to compile all the evidence and also wanted the address of the man she was cheating with. My private investigator also pointed something out to me. He said on one of the, he said on one of the occasions, he saw my wife pull out a phone and give it to the man she was cheating with, and he put the phone in his pocket. He then said to me, it was probably a burner phone that he gave my wife. <laughs> That's why he couldn't find anything. He couldn't find that phone. I was in absolute shock. After 17 years, this woman was in full discreet cheating mode. The next thing I did was call a lawyer and set up a meeting to see what this would look like for me and how bad it would be. I wanted to make sure with all of my businesses and myself that I was protected in some way. I honestly don't want to give her a dime in alimony. Once I contacted the attorney, I started moving things around without her knowledge. I opened up two more checking accounts, mostly for the business, and one personal at a different bank, and I removed her from my life insurance policy. I had also planned to hand deliver a package to this guy's wife once I knew her husband wouldn't be at home. As the days go by, my wife senses something because I have been really distant and indifferent towards her. I haven't said much to her since finding out she was cheating. Yeah, once indifference sets in, that's it. All I cared about now was getting the fuck out of this marriage as painless and cheap as possible. I knew I had to act fast before she caught on and started hiding things from me. One day, I decided to pack a small bag with some clothes and personal items, and I would leave to go run and check on my businesses and not come back home. I was staying at a hotel near one of my businesses and continued to proceed with the divorce from the hotel. The day I left and didn't come back home around midnight, she called and sends me a text asking where I am. She left a voicemail and she was drunk. <laughs> I just hung up on her, sent a text and told her to get some sleep. The next day I talked to the attorney and had him file for divorce on the grounds of infidelity. I told him I don't want to pay her alimony. I informed him that I knew here in the state of Louisiana, her cheating would possibly affect any alimony she may get. In addition, the attorney told me that I could file for divorce on the grounds of mental cruelty as well. When my soon-to-be ex-wife was at work, I went to the house, got a storage unit, and moved some more things out. I also had a folder of pictures and videos of her cheating on me. I left a manila envelope on the table with the word enjoy on it. I also went to her AP's house and made sure he was gone. Went up to his door, laid another envelope on the front porch, rang the doorbell and walked away. That was two weeks ago. Since then, my soon-to-be ex-wife has hired her own attorney. Her AP dumped her and tried to salvage his marriage, but his wife is divorcing him. And my soon-to-be ex-wife wanted to talk and start over. I said no. When I declined, she was nasty and irate. At the hearing, her lawyer tried to say I made substantially more than her, which I do, and we were married for 17 years. And her infidelity shouldn't be a factor. But the judge interrupted and said it is a factor, since our state is an at-fault state. So, the judge didn't give her any alimony, but she did order us to sell the house and recoup some equity, if any, and split it. The judge also told her if she wanted to try and get half of my 401k and retirement, she would have to prove that I had cheated on her, which I haven't. The look on her face was priceless. <laughs> she was in utter shock and couldn't believe what the judge had just said. Needless to say, we are now divorced. I got the rest of my belongings, found an agent, and put the house on the market. The wife of her AP called me and told me that he has to pay her 6000 a month in alimony for five years and continue to pay the mortgage on the house. Ouch. Wow, $72,000 a year after he cheated? That's a lot of money. And my ex-wife left the hospital she was working at and moved across the state. And I haven't seen or talked to her since. Putting the house on the market, it still breaks my heart. I love this woman and to think she didn't give a damn about me. I am still healing, 
but I am taking it one day at a time. I don't have much to say. He had to pay a private investigator some money, but he kept his businesses, no alimony, but he must split the equity in their home when it sells. Small price to pay, in my opinion. He has already recovered financially, if you think about it. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.